Hello fellow collectors, just giving a heads up on a potential problem, I don't know. I ordered this uh, two pack of Renault 8 vehicles from this AliExpress seller Diecast Toy Vehicle Store. Uh, good price, only like 15 bucks or something for two cars with shipping included. Uh, but here, here it came, and it's nicely packed, you know, in this like styrofoam box with the bubble wrap and all that stuff. So, showed up nicely. But then I opened this, and that's when I decided to video this because I wanted to see. I have a these are awfully small looking vehicles here. All right, uh, so we're gonna measure the wheelbase. A couple of internet sources are telling me that this thing has a wheelbase of 2273 millimeters. So let's see, we got some tape here. Well, at least I can get this side. So, decent enough display case. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this is definitely not, uh, these could be 187 scale, which fortunately I do have a small collection of. This is crazy. This says metal. Uh, this is like a tri-lobe metal release. It's not even plastic. It's actually metal. Oh, I'm trying to figure out is do I go clockwise or counterclockwise? Uh, there's no stop here in the plastic. Hmm. It's weird. I don't see anything moving up here either. It's, I can't seem to actually twist this thing in any direction. There we go, so counterclockwise. Yeah, this is not 164. <sighs> there we go. All right, but you'll see here in the listing, it literally says 164, right? Uh, so, oh, but see, you know, I guess I should have looked at this. It's very misleading, right? They're kind of smart that they protect themselves. So there's a good chance I might not get any money back. But it's obviously misleading to list it as 164 scale. Okay, well, anyways, let's just take a look here. 2273 millimeters. I'm going to measure the wheelbase of this guy. Around 25.6. One eighty nine. So this is one eighty seven scale, you know, give or take, you know. So definitely, that's a pretty big jump from one sixty four. All right. Well, let's continue on with the review since I have it. I'll, uh, not, we'll have to see if I actually get some money back. All right. Well, the uh, Renault eight and the Renault. Uh, 10, which is neither of these, but the Gordini has four headlights. It's a facelifted version. But the original Renault 8, which I believe is the two headlighted version here, came out in 1962 and was produced up until 1973. Wikipedia is telling me that the facelifted version occurred in 1967 and then it gained the name R8 Gordini. And this car was relatively successful with a few rally, rally race wins. It was rear-engined and uh, rear-wheel drive. Engine choices were 960 up to 1300cc inline cylinder fours. Alrighty, so that's all I really bothered to learn. So let's just take a look here. Well, these are all Gordini photos, but uh, I guess I can actually hold both of these things. So essentially it's just, you know, the, the facelift got a couple extra headlights. I think both of them look pretty cool. They're very interesting. Uh, rear engine, so there's some vent details in the trunk there. Okay. All right, let's start with just the, the R8 here. <laughs> it's so small. All right, so it's a uh, you know diecast metal, the body that is, and then we have some uh, silver paint here for this like chrome strip going across the body. The door handles are sticking out and painted silver. There's even a little silver here on the window. Little markers got some silver and orange or something there. 
Maybe it's white. It's really hard to tell. It's really small. I like these wheels. Uh, they're like stamped seal wheels with a hubcap. Pretty nicely detailed. The tires are, I think, I think they're rubbery and they have some tread. They're press fit together, but I mean, I don't, I don't know if people would modify such a small car. I suppose it's possible. It's nice that it says uh, Renault 8, and then on, obviously it says a scale here. So the listing is clearly wrong, right? So this might actually help me get some money back because the model actually says 187 and the listing does not. Okay, some uh, decent enough details underneath and then the exhaust pipe is part of the plastic base. So going around to the back, we have some painted tail lights and they're nicely done. You know, it's like a black molding print and then red on top of that. It's nice to see that there's a year on the license plate as well. So that's pretty cool. Little uh, key key mechanism, a little chrome strip there. The bumpers are actually separate pieces, chrome plastic with a little black rub strip there painted on. Then we have some sort of printing there. I can't make it out though. It almost looks Chinese. I wonder if this thing was actually made and sold in China. That's a possibility. Okay, some black paint in these vents. And sadly, there's bad paint on a brand new product. Like it's got some paint rash, it looks like. Some silver paint for the window molding back here. This actually has a red interior, which is pretty nice. This side, uh, yeah, this is like a cream yellow. Actually, no, to the naked eye, I would just call it like an ivory off-white color. It's barely yellow. It just looks kind of like an, you know, a really old cream color. Alrighty. Then some more black paint up in here. But also more paint problems. Paint rash, something. And then we actually have some plastic headlights with some chrome surrounds. I think that's possibly a chrome piece of plastic with a clear piece of plastic in it. So that's impressive. And then we have a little raised silver thing here, so a chrome strip. Paint's not the greatest though. But the license plate, again, is really nice. And then uh, separate front bumpers. Some bumps with some paint here for the uh, turn signals. And then some wiper blades are also raised, and it looks like there might be some paint on them. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see in there, but there's a black steering wheel. There's some red seats. There's, it looks like a shifter knob there. Yeah, boy, yeah, let's, let's get the flashlight. Yeah, there we go. Pretty distorted windows, but we have to remember this is 187 scale. I'm actually surprised that the interior of this is on par with a lot of 164 scale mid-range models. I mean, at least it's red. A lot of other more expensive brands are just using black plastic most of the time. Like ignition model. Come on, ignition, get some other plastic. Alright, so that one's alright. No major complaints, except for the paint bubblings. It's quite annoying. So this looks pretty much the same as the other one. But, you know, now we have yellow plastic headlights in four of them. And then we have a just the Renault Diamond there. This says 1966, which uh, it's not matching Wikipedia's uh, info. But uh, I would assume this might be right. Sadly, there's not enough silver paint on this plastic. But now we know that this is a separate plastic piece from the headlight piece. All right, some bumps there again. Bumper looks the same. Nice little white racing stripes going across the whole body. Very cool. Uh, this side, no problems. So the back looks good. Oh, it actually says Gordini on the back of this one. Mm, this one has no text other than that whatever I don't know if that's supposed to say or no I mean that looks Chinese to me yeah let's see about this on this blue one and I'm trying to get the camera to focus on it but maybe they're supposed to say or no it's just not really can't make it out okay all right well so that's it we have a two set here for around 15 bucks or so with free shipping 
So like seven dollars for an HO scale model. That's actually die cast. That seems all right. It's definitely there are definitely more expensive ones. Okay, well as far as comparing, <laughs> I was I didn't know if it was really a small K class car, but here's a 164 scale K class car. It's like the Honda N360 or the Subaru. Is this a Subaru? Yeah, this is the Subaru 360. So naturally, even a K class vehicle in 164 scale totally dwarfs it, or like a, a regular size TLV. So what I need to do is I need to go get my 187 scale cars. Give me a second here. I'll get these out of here. Okay, so here's a uh, Fiat 500 made by a brand called Bush. I like the beer, spelled the same way. Probably not the same company though. And this is a all plastic body. So this is definitely like a model railroading type of uh, caliber. It's simply tighter in all of its details because the body is plastic. It still has separate bumpers and all that stuff. And it has what looks like to be a gray seated interior with a black steering wheel. So it's a small car, right? But if you want to really step up the game, the best brand I've ever experienced in 187 is the Spark model. They also have a line of Ferraris called Redline models. And this has all the details that one would expect in a 143rd scale car, never mind a 164. So, multiple colored interior, plastic lights. There's actually eight plastic lights in the front end of this thing. Right? It's crazy. Uh, painted details. But the only problem is the uh, decals. Look how they're cracked. This model is probably like 15 to 20 years old. So, but thin antennas, you know, even uh, photo wash metal rear wiper blade and front wiper blades. So it's just, this thing is just blows away most 164 scale models. And it's wonderful. All right, anyways. So that's the only other Renault I have in 187 scale. There's a little top view. All right, let's get this thing, these two spinning on their own. All right, guys, well, now you know that you should avoid that AliExpress listing unless you are actually looking for a 187 scale set of die cast cars. When you get into 187, Personally, I prefer plastic models, or frankly, in any scale, I prefer plastic models because they're simply better detailed than metal. You, you just can't get tight lines or out of a metal mold unless uh, that mold is destroyed very quickly. So, that's just my personal opinion, of course. Uh, Alright, well, anyways... As far as 187s go, I mean, these are okay for the for the price that they went for, considering the shipping was free. Yeah, they seem pretty good, actually. But uh, they're obviously not the best of this scale. But that's perfectly fine for the for the price. They're just interesting cars. Uh, they kind of remind me of the, the Hino Contessa, which I think there was some sort of... Maybe Hino was subcontracting these. Okay, well, anyways, uh, I appreciate you guys checking this out. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in an actual 164 scale review. Alright, bye now.